Hi, we're going to talk about related rates. This is the first video of uh, two videos that I'm going to make on this. Uh, what's a related rate? So you have problems when uh, you have a quantity that is going to be changing at a certain rate and then you want to determine how a related quantity is going to change at a particular moment. And uh, a lot of these problems deal with, res with rates that are going to be with respect to time. And we always use implicit differentiation because your variables are never going to be time. So here's the first problem, y equals x squared, dx over dt is negative 0.5 units per second, and we want to find dy over dt when x is going to be negative 2. So here's what we're going to do. Implicit differentiation with respect to t, so derivative of y is 1 times dy over dt. Derivative of x squared is 2x times dx over dt. We're given dx over dt here, we're given the value of x, and we're looking for dy over dt. So dy over dt, in this case, is going to be 2 times x, which is negative 2, times dx over dt, which is negative 0.5. And after we do all that, we are going to get 2, and it's going to be units per second. So by the way, positive number means it's increasing. So increasing at the rate at a rate of two units per second. Next problem. We have this formula here, y equals square root of 25 minus x squared, and dx over dt is two units per second. Find dy over dt when x is four. So take the derivative, derivative of one of y is one times dy over dt. Derivative of this expression is going to be, so you use chain rule here, it's going to be negative 2x divided by 2 square root of 25 minus x squared, which will simplify to x, negative x over square root of 25 minus x squared. All right. We are going to substitute our values. We have dx over dt. Oh, I forgot dx over dt here. I knew something was missing. So we are going to substitute all that. So uh, the value, so dy over dt for our value is going to be negative x, x is 4, divided by square root of 25 minus 4 squared times dx over dt, which is 2. So that's going to give us negative 8 here. The bottom is 25 minus 16, so square root of uh, 9, which is going to be 3, and that's our answer. So decreasing at a rate of negative 8 third units per second. All right. um, so most uh, re related rates problems are going to be word problems. And uh, uh, th this is usually what we are going to, for this is the process that we follow. So we're going to identify the quantities that are given and the quantities they were looking for. And, and also includes the rates. Uh, make a diagram if needed. We're going to write equation that is going to connect the quantities. So we, chain, we use chain rule to differentiate both sides with respect to time. And we'll finally substitute the quantities that we know uh, and the, the rates that we know and we find the desired rate. So here's our first problem, very typical problem. A rock is thrown in the pond, creates a circular ripple that is moving at the rate of 3 feet per second. How fast is the area of the ripple changing when the radius is 8 feet? So let's see what we know. We have the rate of the, at which the, uh, the, circle, uh, the, the ripple is moving and that would be what's affecting the radius. So dr over dt is 3. Okay, what else we know? We know that the radius is 8 feet. Okay, how do we find the area? The area is going to be pi r squared. We differentiate both sides with respect to time, implicit differentiation. So dA over dt is going to equal 2 pi r dr over dt. Okay, and uh, we, I think we know everything here. We know r. And we know dr over dt, we just substitute those values. So dA over dt is going to be 2 pi 
times the radius, which is 8, times dr over dt, that's 3, and it's going to give us 48 pi square feet per second because it's area and it's increasing right because it's positive that's problem uh, a side of a cube is increasing at the rate of two inches per second how fast is the volume of the cube is changing when the length of the side cube is six inches you can draw a picture but we don't really need that um, so what is given to us? This is the length of the side. So if we, let's call it ds over dt, which is going to be 2, positive 2. We know at one point the side is going to be 6 inches. And we're looking for the volume. So how do you find the volume of a cube? It's going to be side cube. So dv over dt equals 3 s squared ds over dt I believe we know all that so dv over dt is going to equal 3 times side squared which is 36 times the rate ds over dt which is 2 and it's going to give us 144 so this is volume rate of change of volume which is going to be cubic inches per second increasing so that's how fast the volume is going to be increasing when the rate uh, is 2 and uh, the side is going to be 6. Next problem, example 5. So in this problem we are going to have a spherical balloon is losing air at the rate of 5 cubic centimeters per minute. How fast is the radius of the balloon changing when the radius is 10 centimeters? Let's see what we know. We're given the rate at which it's losing air, it's cubic units per minute, which is going to be dv over dt, and that's going to be negative 5. It's very important that you put a negative value here because you need to interpret the results correctly. What else do we know? We know that the radius is going to be 10. And how do we find the volume of a, of a sphere? Well, the volume of a sphere is going to be 4 third pi r cube. Now we need to differentiate that. So dv over dt equals 4 pi r squared dr over dt. So this problem is a little bit different because here we know this and we're trying to find that. We're going to have to solve it. But the first thing that I would do, I would put all the information that we know and then we'll deal with the, the results. So dv over dt is 5. This is going to be 4 pi. The radius squared that's going to be 100 and we're looking for dr over dt. So dr over dt is going to be negative 5 divided by 4 pi times 100 and if we simplify that uh, it's going to simplify to negative 1 over 80 pi. This is going to be centimeters per minute. So that's decreasing this is the rate at which it's going to decrease. Alright, our next problem. Uh, the one leg of a right triangle has a fixed length of 8 feet. The second leg is extending at the rate of 2 feet per minute. And what we want to do is we want to find how fast the area of the triangle is changing. Here I would suggest that you need to make a diagram just so you can see it better. So this is what we have. One leg is, has a fixed length. The other one is changing. We need to come up with a variable. So what do we know? We know that dx over dt is going to be 2, positive 2, right? We know that the leg, the second leg, is going to be 6 at one point. How do we find the area of a triangle? The area of a triangle is 1 half base time height. This is the right triangle, so it's the product of two legs. 1 half times a times x, which is going to be 4x. So the calculator, uh, now we differentiate, dA over dt is going to equal 4 dx over dt. And here's an interesting thing about this problem. x is actually not going to matter here. The rate at which the area is going to be changing is going to be the same no matter what the value of x is going to be. 
Okay, but we still need to answer the question. So we are going to write this dA over dt equals 4 and dx over dt is 2. So it's going to be 8 and this is going to be square feet per second increasing oh, per minute here. And it's increasing, right? Because it's positive. All right. Moving on. Next problem. Uh, a ten foot. This is a very standard calculus problem. Ten foot ladder is leaning against the wall. The floor is slippery, so the bottom of the ladder is beginning to slide away from the wall at the rate of 0.5 feet per second. How fast is the top of the ladder sliding when the bottom of the ladder is six feet away from the wall? Let's make a picture. So we have a ladder. Let's call this x, let's call this h, and this is going to be 10 feet. So this is a constant value. What do we know? We know that dx over dt, this is the bottom distance, this one's increasing at the rate of 0.5, okay? We know that the height, I'm sorry, the, the, the value of x at one point is going to be 6. So what do we know here? This is a right triangle, we're trying to tie all three quantities together. We know that x squared plus h squared plus x squared is going to give us 10 squared, which is 100. We differentiate both sides with respect to t. So 2h dh over dt plus 2x dx over dt is going to equal 0. The derivative of 100 is 0. So we're going to solve it for dh over dt. So dh over dt, after all the work is done, is going to be negative x over h times dx over dt. I believe we have all the values, right? Well, we actually don't, we, we don't know what h is. I'm sorry, this was the value of x. I made a mistake here. But using a, a Pythagorean theorem, you can fit, fit, figure out the value of h, and it's going to be 8. So we know everything now. So dh over dt is going to be negative 6 over 8 times dx over dt, which is 0.5, which is actually 1 half, so negative 3 fourths times 1 half, which is going to give us negative 3 eighths. So, and it's going to be feet per second. So that's how fast this distance is going to be moving. And it should make sense that as this distance here is increasing, this distance here is going to decrease, so it's decreasing. All right, and we have one last problem here. Air is being pumped into a spherical balloon at the rate of four cubic inches per minute. How fast is the surface area? At first, it resembled the, another problem we did earlier, but it actually is different. So, what do we know? Uh, air is being pumped into. So dr, I don't think we need a diagram here, dr over d, no, I'm sorry, that's dv, we're pumping balloon at this rate. So dv over dt is going to be positive 4. Right? Uh, we're going to need two formulas here. Oh, and we know that the radius at one point is 5. One formula we're going to need is for the volume, which is going to be 4 third pi r cubed. This is how you find the volume of a sphere. And if you differentiate this formula, you're going to get dv over dt equal to 4 pi r squared dr over dt. Okay. Another formula we're going to need is the formula for the uh, surface area. So the area of a, to find the area of a sphere, the formula is a equals pi r squared, 4 pi r squared. So here we're going to get dA over dt equals 4, now it's going to be 8 pi r dr over dt, correct? So here's what we're going to need to do. We need to find this, we need to find that. We don't have the rate of change for the radius, uh, but we actually don't need that. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to solve um, one of these formulas for the radius. So which one? It's not really going to matter, but I'm going to use this first formula. So this formula, if I solve it for dr over dt, is going to give me 1 over 4 pi r squared times dv over dt. And what I'm going to do with this now is I'm going to take that 
and I'm going to substitute it in here. So dA over dt, which is what I'm looking for, is going to be 8 pi r times, this is replaced with that, so 1 over 4 pi r squared times dV over dt. It's always good to simplify it, if possible. So we should be able to simplify it. Let's see what we can do here. Uh, we got pi and pi, which are going to cancel. We got 8 and, oh, I'm sorry, pi and pi, and then 8 and 4 will leave you with 2. And r here with this, 1r is going to cancel. So your simplified formula here for dA or dt is going to be 2 over r dV over dt. Okay, we have all of that. So dA over dt, when we substitute the values, is going to be 2 over r, which is 5, times dV over dt, which is 4, and the answer is going to be 8 fifth. So this is the rate of change of area. It's going to be squared inches per minute. And of course, it's increasing. Okay, and that's how you do these problems.